Man, I feel like we should start off every video with just a random guitar chord. What's going on you guys and welcome back to another King James video. Now, I wanted to make a video today talking about some of my developing chemicals and kind of maybe just walk you through how I develop my black and white film at home. And I want to get that clear straight off the bat. Yes, I develop my black and white film, but when it comes to color film, generally just because the scanning process for color film is a little difficult for me, um, I like to send my color film out to lab. So whether it's a local lab or the darkroom lab, whatever it may be, I send my color film out to a lab. But when it comes to my black and white film, I always make sure to develop them at home. And I always wanna make sure that my black and white film is done in a very controlled environment because I've sent black and white film out to different labs. And personally, I haven't always had good experiences because I'm a person that likes to shoot HP5, for example, my favorite black and white film, at 400 ISO at times, and there are other times where I'll push it to 1600 or maybe even 3200. So, you know, I really need my developing to be concise and precise. Maybe that was the word precise when it comes to black and white. And so I decided that I would do all of my black and white developing at home. So first things first, I'm gonna show you guys the chemicals that I use, talk about them a little bit. And then, man, I think I have a couple of rules of this stuff right here. This is a street candy film. And as colorful as the packaging is, it's actually a black and white film. I shot this film like a couple of months ago and I don't know what's on here. So it'll be interesting to see what the hell is on this. But yeah, we're gonna develop this film today. Uh, but first of all, like I said, let's start off with the chemicals that I use. Now, I guess the first thing we'll talk about is developer. Now, the developer is the first step in the process of black and white film. It's what you put your film through first. But the developer that I like to use is Kodak Professional HC110. Now, HC110 has a lot of fan favorites among the film photography community, but there are other people who just live and stand by, like D76, which is a powder-based developer, or also um, Rodinal, that's another one that a lot of people like. But personally for me, I like Kodak HC110 for a couple of different reasons. I'm a person that doesn't always have a lot of time on my hands, so when it comes to developing film, sometimes I like it to be quick and fast. Now with HC110, because as you guys can see, it's a uh, working solution here, you can make dilutions from this concentrate, I should say concentrate. You can make dilutions from this concentrate and you can pretty much dilute them to be any power or strength as you would want. And usually they come in dilution A, dilution B, dilution C, or even like a stock solution. Dilution A being the strongest. And one of the benefits is that when you use a stronger dilution, the developing time of the film in the tank there actually goes down. But the downside of using dilution A is that you use a lot more chemical. I think the standard rule of HP5 at 400 ISO, dilution A with HC110 is only about two and a half minutes. Now the next step in the development process after you uh, put your film through the developer is to put it through a stop bath. Now, now this is a very controversial thing. A lot of people will say you can just use water as a stop bath. But the way I learned it and the way that I was taught was to always use some type of stop bath. And so with that said, man, the stop bath that I use is this stuff right here. It's called Kodak Indicator Stop Bath. And it comes in this kind of really cool colored liquid bottle. Now, Kodak Indicator Stop Bath, the reason why I like this stuff is because once the, uh, the, the chemicals get exhausted after, you know, tons and tons and tons of rolls of using it, it'll turn a different color and that color will allow you to be indicated that it's time to change out your chemicals, hence the name indicator stop bath. But I'll be honest with you, man, this is the stop bath I've been using now for the last three years. It hasn't changed color. So at this point, I hope it's still good because I'm about to go develop some film. But if not, man, I always have some backup and I actually think I bought this because I accidentally put a little bit of fixer in here. And I don't think I covered this, but it stops the developer from developing further on, hence the name Stop Bath. You, you stop the development. Now the third step into developing your black and white film is to put your film through what we would call a fixer. Now the fixer that I like to use is called Kodak Codafix. I think it's just called Codafix, period. Um, and I, I, I don't know if you guys have noticed, I like to stick with the Kodak brand when it comes to developing chemicals. And personally, I'm more than happy to try out other brands of developing chemicals, but just for what I've been doing for the past three years, this has been working the best and it's been the most consistent for me. Like I said, I use Codafix. This is it right here. It doesn't look like this. It comes in a little bottle, same thing as the indicator stop bath. Um, and then you make a little um, kind of working solution out of it. So, and the last chemical that I use is actually not necessary, but if you want to be able to hang your film and make it dry quick, um, I highly, highly recommend all black and white shooters or developers to use this, and it's called 
Kodak Professional Photo Flow. Now, Photo Flow is a lifesaver, man. If you want your film to dry without streaks, um, if you don't use Photo Flow, what you'll notice is that when your film dries up, there's gonna be streaks of water all over the film. And when you scan it, those streaks are gonna be present. So in order to combat that, we use Photo Flow. And um, I don't know if this is just like a, 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 a myth, but Photo Flow, to me personally, makes the film dry a lot more straight. The best part about this is that you can literally take one to two drops and put it into uh, just like regular water and then put that into the developing thing, man, and it's gonna last you. So this little bottle right here, a lot of people will tell you it'll last you a lifetime. Again, I've used this for now two years and that's how much I've used in the last two years. So those are pretty much all of the chemicals I use. I know it's a little boring, um, but if you guys have any questions on the chemicals that I'm using, or if you guys just wanna know more about it, I'm sure there are other YouTubers out there who make some fantastic videos covering the chemicals that we're talking about today. But for now, folks, I'm gonna take you guys to the next step and we're gonna go develop some film. Um, but I need to wash my hands really quick and get the dark bag ready and start to prep that. All right, so you guys know film is light sensitive, so anytime it touches light, it's gonna be exposed. So we need to do this process in complete darkness. Now, there's two ways we can do this. The first way is to turn off all the lights and just sit here and do it in complete darkness, or we could use what we'd call a changing bag. Now here is the changing bag right here, um, and pretty much you stick everything that you need, all of your tools, the film, the reels, everything, and you do the entire process inside of the changing bag. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you guys first how I load the film onto the reel. Uh, and generally this is what, you know, the standard Patterson reel looks like. It's an easy reel. And uh, here's essentially what I'm gonna do inside of the bag. I'm gonna take this film. This isn't the actual film we're gonna be developing. Actually, I think this one is empty. And what I'll do is I'll pry this open with my fingers. And again, this is in complete darkness. This is all inside of the changing bag. And I'm gonna open this up just like that. I'll take the film and this is where I'm at in step one. Next, again, this is all in complete darkness. I'm gonna take the film and I'm gonna cut the leader off. And after I cut the leader off, I'm gonna grab the reel. Now the reel has two teeth and the teeth are exactly what you're gonna be looking for and you'll usually find it by feeling with your fingers. After you feel the teeth, you insert that film tip into the front and then you slide it until it latches on. Now once you're at this step, it's pretty simple. All you really have to do now is wait for that film to load on there. And so now you kind of just do this again in complete darkness. You're just doing this right here. That's pretty much what I'm gonna be doing, but I'm gonna be doing that in complete darkness. All right, let's do this. All right, so here's the changing bag. All right, so we have everything now in the changing bag. And so what we do is we put our arms through this little hole right here. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll locate the reels. So I have the reels in my hand right here. And then I'll find the way the teeth are actually facing so it's easier to load onto the reel. So there we go. Again, pry open the top of the piece. So now I got the part open. I'm gonna cut off the tip here, the film leader. Do as best as you can to make it straight. All right, and I'm gonna grab the reel then I'm just gonna start loading the film onto the reel, just like how we did in the daylight. Also, one thing too, if you guys are following along, I try my best not to touch the center of the film, just because I don't wanna leave any fingerprints, especially after developing when I scan it. All right, so there's the end of the first roll, and what I'll do is usually depending on who makes the film, it's just a little tape at the end there. Uh, yeah, so I'll just cut the, the back end of it. All right, that's rule number one. So I'm gonna do the same thing now for rule number two, and then we're gonna go get on to developing. All right, we should be good now. There's the tank with the cover on, here are the scissors, and then here are the film canisters and the uh, leftover residue of what was left after cutting the strips off. All right, so there's the hard step of developing film, uh, loading it into the tank. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take you over to the bathroom and I'm gonna show you guys how I actually developed the film. All right, so the first thing that I'm doing here is just putting on some gloves for protection. Um, and now I'm actually on a website called Digital Truth. Now, Digital Truth is where you can input the type of film you're developing and also the developer you're using to figure out what your development time is according to your ISO. So I figured it out that this would be at two and a half minutes for dilution A in HC 110. Now, 
I'm gonna start making my dilutions with HC 110 here. So I need to make dilution A, which is 31 mil to about 469 milliliters of water. Uh, because I am developing two rolls of film, you need 500 ml of liquid, and I'm just adding tap water directly. Now, a lot of people say you can use distilled water, but personally, I just use tap water. And uh, after I make that dilution, I need to make also my photo flow dilution, which is what I'm doing here. And again, you only need about one to two drops of this stuff, and then you need to bring it up to about 500 ml of water. So both of my dilutions are ready to go. So now I'm ready to start developing my film. But the first thing that I need to do is pre-wash. Now, you can do this if you want to. Some people say you don't need to do a pre-wash, but personally for me, I like to run my film through like maybe two to three times under some water. Now, the first step in the process is to put your film through the developer. Now, we established that we would do this for two and a half minutes, and we need to agitate this film in the developer every 30 seconds. So as you see here, I'm doing what we call a circular agitation. And this is one of the agitation methods you can use. Um, and you'll see me often continually look up at the clock. And after I'm done agitating for 30 seconds, I'll give it a couple of taps and then I'll wait again for the other 30 seconds. And then I'm back agitating again. So agitate every 30 seconds for two and a half minutes. After I'm done with the HC110 developer, I'll pour it out and then I will start with my stop bath. Now we're going to be doing this stop bath for 45 seconds with continuous agitation, but I want you to take a look here at the dipstick. And this is the other way you can actually agitate your film. You insert the dipstick at the top there and you just kind of twist it to make sure you cover all of that film because your stop bath is supposed to stop any of the developer from continuing to develop the film so it doesn't get overexposed. So after you're done with the stop bath, uh, stop bath excuse me it's pretty quick 45 seconds you just pop it back into the bottle because it's reusable and then we'll move on to the next step which is to fix your film now fixer you're going to do it for five minutes and you're going to agitate it for every 30 seconds and um, again it's the same thing as the developer here but depending on how long you need to fix is uh also relative to how old your chemicals are if you are using a new fixer five minutes should be enough but if it's not you might need to fix for a little bit longer just so the negatives will last longer longer over time um, and after you're done with fixing again you just put it back in the bottle and it's reusable completely and right before our final step we're gonna wash it in water again for about five minutes and this is the time where I'll take to clean up all of my equipment all of the glass beakers all of that stuff um, and you want to wash this in water for about five to ten minutes all right guys so the film is now being rinsed it's in the final kind of water wash and the last step we're going to do is actually put it through the photo flow. But before we do that, I want to show you guys something really quick. This is my ghetto little hack here. Um, basically, if you guys don't have anything to hang your film with, you guys can do the little ghetto technique that I have. This is, this is pretty much just a pants hanger. So hangers that you get when you buy pairs of pants. And on the bottom of them, I have these paper bag clips. Um, these clips you can find at the Dollar Tree or you can find them anywhere pretty much. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll hang them up here on the shower and then these little things will clamp to the bottom of my film and then the actual film will be held up by the pants hanger. So you guys don't have to spend, you know, tons and tons of money on a, a kind of like a hanging rack for your film. Just do it the way I do it if you want a quick and simple easy fix that actually works. All right, and after that little ghetto technique, the last step after washing it in water is to put it through photo flow. Now, this is completely optional, but again, photo flow is going to be there for you to allow your film to not have to dry with water streaks. So when you're drying your, or excuse me, when you're scanning your film, you won't have all of those nasty streaks on your film. So honestly, man, if you are developing black and white film, you need to use photo flow, and it's just a one minute agitation. After that, you take your film out and you can view them. And you want to make sure your photo flow is your absolute last, last wash. And after that, you can pretty much just take a look at your film, review your images. And this is probably the best part. And the last step here is to hang your film to dry. And as you guys can see, I'm actually running both of my fingers down the film to make sure I get all of the excess liquid.
And there you have it, folks. That is how I develop my black and white film from home. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions regarding the development process, uh, leave me a comment down below. I'd be more than happy to help anyone out. But that's going to wrap it up for this week, you guys. As always, thank you for tuning in to another King James video. Minolta gang. <laughs> Thank you.